So it's been an absolute nightmare week. I've been trying to get hold of Joey O'Brien's agent. Can I get hold of him? Can I buggery? It is absolutely annoying. On top of that, our weekly delivery of Jaffa Cakes didn't turn up. So I'm fractionally in a bad mood, but I've had a brew and I had a jammy dodger, so things aren't too bad. But I need to get hold of Joey O'Brien's agent. You know, he really is. He's having words in Joey's ear, and that's turned his head. He thinks he can get a bigger contract at a bigger club, and you know, maybe he can, but what we're doing at West Ham is something amazing. You know, you just got to bear with us. We will deliver. And as you can see, we're sitting length in the league, and we're playing QPR, who are in 10th. If we can get a win today, we will go above them. And I'm trying out an experimental formation, 3-5-2. I want to sort of have plenty in defence but I want to go forward I want to bomb forward at the same time you know I want to utilise five players going forward and I want to utilise five players in defence it will either work or it could completely and utterly foul but early doors QPR show that they want to come and get a victory but the young lad Ria shows he's strong enough to deal with the likes of Cissé and um, out muscles him, thankfully. Now we pick up the ball with Suzoko. He knocks it into Andy Carroll, who's going through a bit of a, a bad patch at the moment, struggling to find a goal. Knocks it to Nolan. He gives it to Gabs. Fisher, early doors, gets a cross in. And unfortunately, the end product is not spot on. But he's a young lad. Van Diali picks the ball up. He has an air shot that didn't really cause any damage to QPR. And again, QPR come flying back at us. And thankfully, Zizoko just done enough to put the player off and the, and the lad headed it wide, which is which is pretty good. We've had a run-in with him before, if you've, if you've seen previous episodes. Zizoko picks the ball up. He goes out to the left-hand side. He then turns back inside, spots the ever-present Carroll. As I say, going through bad form, which is really disappointing. He turns back inside, and look at Nolan, the wide old cat, just in front of the back four. Turns, shoots, and nearly scores. Unbelievably so close. The ball goes long. Rears with a fantastic header. He knocks it down to Nolan. Nolan majestically goes forward. Knocks it into Gabs. Gabs then glides between the two defenders. Picks the ball. Shoots! And bloody well scores! Good on you, Gabs! What a goal! What a goal! Absolutely classy goal! Fantastic football! And look at that! He glides into the box. Fantastic finish! That boy is starting to find his feet in the Premier League. That boy is an absolute little gem. There's no shadow of a doubt about it. He is fantastic. And talking about passion, look at Collins. Gets straight in there. Puts his heart and everything into that tackle. Picks the ball up. The move doesn't come to anything, but it just goes to show it's not the manager's passion. The players have the passion. The players have the belief. Fantastic crossing. And again, Andy Carroll is just really unlucky not to score. Now the passion can lead to, to reckless challenges. By Riaz, he's a young lad, which is not too bad. You know, I'm not too worried. Not when you've got a fantastic professional like Winston Reid. Quite happy to nick in, clean up the debris, and we move on. We went in at half-time, and it was 1-0. And it must have been a complete change of... Of, of you know not having Jaffa Cakes because we came out of the second half and we were just purely lax QPR started to turn up the pressure you could feel the heat rising the fans were becoming unsettled and QPR were 100% out for, for victory and get something out of the game as you can see Rias makes a little bit of an error but never fear Super Tank Buckland is here and he cleans up the mess you know some people are going to say come on Rias hasn't got it I tell you what he's a classy lad he did make a couple of errors but I think he's going to be a formidable centre-back. As you can see again, QPR keep breaking. And unfortunately, they ran out of ideas there, which was lucky. And Buckman cleaned it up quite nicely. But they just kept coming forward, you know. They just they just would not give in. Absolutely not give in. We were lucky to get away with that, you know. He had such a great opportunity. He could have stuck it on the back stick and caused us some real damage, but he didn't. Butland again comes to our rescue. A slight mix-up with the back four. Butland has to save it again. But Collins comes away with the ball and then utilises his experience to win the goal kick. That is an experienced defender. The boy's got knowledge. Fantastic play by the lad. And again, QPR just keep coming at us. Rios is slightly out of position. Winston reads out of position. They break through. Great save by Butland. Slight mix-up with clearing the ball. And how they missed that, I do not know. You watch this on the replay. The ball comes back to him. And how did he miss that? Unbelievable. Thankfully, he did. Butland then throws the ball out to Phillips. I bought him on because I needed some fresh legs. And the lad's a really decent player. He knocks it into Carroll, who's going through a bad patch. Gabs picks it up. He spots the run for Diami, but he doesn't give a decent ball. 
Tabat picks it up, knocks it back to the goalkeeper, and oh my god, did he just score an own goal? Oh my days. What was Tabat doing in uh, in the left back position anyway? That's just uh, ridiculous. But you know, I'm not going to complain. I'm not going to moan, but we'll take any goal. We will take any goal. So that puts us 2 0 up, and uh, pretty much the last action of the game as we walk away with a well deserved 2 0 victory. We did ride our luck in the second half a little bit. But overall, we were the better team. And I get a little email from uh, Raheem, you know, saying, thanks, boss. I appreciate the extended run, and I'm much happier now. To be quite honest, I wasn't aware that he was unhappy. Now, I read the newspaper, and you know I'm not a great fan of the bloody tabloids. And I see this. O'Brien's agent talks. How strange he won't return my phone calls. How strange he won't return my text messages, my emails, my faxes. But he finds it in his heart and he has the time to speak to the tabloids. That really does annoy me. That really does make me quite angry. You know, I put a lot of effort, a lot of time into these lads. And it just, it just really frustrates me that agents seem to have so much bloody power. It's really annoying. Really, really annoying. I'm not quite sure how this saga's going to end, to be honest with you. As I say, I have spoke to O'Brien. We have had words in person. We haven't had nothing formal. But he's trying to get hold of his agent so we can actually sit down and have a formal discussion. He just seems to be, uh, well, basically MIA, missing in action, which is not good. But now, as you can see, we have Everton in our sights. And we've got a tough away game to Fulham. I'm not really looking forward to this game. And, you know, I'll make a few changes to the team again. I've got uh, faith in the new lads. But, you know, going to Fulham is a uh, tough prospect. And I feel that we need to uh, to adapt a little bit. And uh, at the same time be fractionally more defensive than we have been in the last few games. You know, we have gone, uh, we have gone hammer and tog at times. And as you can see, we are in ninth position on 34 points. Everton are on 39, Arsenal 41. There is a possibility we can we can make those points up, but we really need to have a, a, a really good run. And to have a good run, you don't want to be starting off games like this. Fulham are all over us. Great passing, great football. A, a really poor defensive header. Knocked into Roddy Ager. He has a shot. It's deflected by Butland. And thank God the post saves the ball. And we pick up the play with O'Brien. He knocks it into Andy Cowell. Ever-present Andy Cowell, but struggling for form. Knocks it into the world-class the army, who gives it to Gabs. Gabs got one thing on his mind, to have a shot that is pushed wide by the keeper. Now, we've been working on this in practice. What we're going to do is stick this at the back post, and you're going to see the lad at the back come hammering in, and he's going to get a header. It's going to be a goal. We're going to walk away with glory, and I'm going to be really chuffed. And none of them done what they were told. I'm really annoyed about that, you know. I put a lot of effort into uh, to training pitch and then training ground uh, emphasis. And it's just annoying that they don't do as they're told. We pick up with Andy Carroll having a shot. That turn is world class, you know. He should be getting more England calls. He should be scoring more goals, but it's just not happening, unfortunately. And we pick the ball up Winston Reid. He knocks the ball out majestically to O'Brien. Because why? Yes, you've guessed it. We are the Barca of East London. Nolan picks the ball up. A fantastic onward run by O'Brien. He takes the ball down the right-hand side. He cuts back in, puts the cross in. Andy Carroll just doesn't go for it. He has he, no passion. You can clearly see he's lacking confidence. If a confident Andy Carroll would have stuck that in a top corner and we would have been 1-0 up. Unfortunately, he's really low on confidence and we're struggling. But we pick it up with Fulham put across it. A great defensive header by O'Brien. And the referee calls it. A penalty? Are you kidding me? Jesus Christ. And I know you're all sitting there saying, come on, John. Week in, week out, you get diabolical penalties. And I agree. Absolutely agree. But at least they're fouls or handballs. O'Brien heads it, for Christ's sake. Absolutely heads it. So I go over to the third official and have a look at the monitor. And as you can see, the ball is on his forehead. The ball is on his forehead. How the hell is that a penalty? Now, there's a slight issue arising from this because I basically walk away and I kick the drinks bottle bag. One of the drinks then flew out 
and slapped Martin Yo on the forehead. So, uh, I could be facing a touchline ban again. Even the West Ham Board of Directors want to take action. They consider it to be misconduct. Oh, dear, oh dear, I don't know. Bloody nightmare being a manager at times, I tell you. But Suzoko picks the ball up. He turns back inside. The ball's taken away from him, but he picks it up again. He knocks it into Sterling. And just look at the barriers in front of us. We're playing against nine people. You know, Fulham are the home side, and they're playing like ultra-defensive. It's, it's just ridiculous. It's just annoying. You know, oh, it's so frustrating. But look at Ries. How classy is he? You think he's going to lose the ball, but no, he has the strength to keep it. Suzoko now has the ball. He looks to go inside, gives it to Carroll, and there's only one thing in his mind. It's actually having a shot, and he's really lucky for the ball to go wide. And we go in at half-time 1-0 down, but we're playing some good football. It's just really difficult to play against a team on world class who stick nine people behind the bloody ball when you're attacking them. It's really annoying. All they, they do is play counter-attacking football. They're hanging on for their lives, and we're by far the better team. As you can see, with Nolan on the ball, it's just got no movement. You know, it, Nothing's happening in front of him. Gabs picks the ball up. He has... A sort of a half-hearted shot that goes wide. He put no true aggression into the shot. And we're still trailing. But we pick it up with Diami. Diami's our ever-present hero. He has a shot. It's deflected. Takes all the sting out of it. And the keeper collects it quite easily. Which is really disappointing. Berbatov knocks the ball out to the left. It's then filtered through to, to striker. And look at them. It's unbelievable. A slight deflection of our fullback. And we got lucky. The ball hits the post. But Fulham then turn up the heat. They keep coming in the last five, six minutes. They have an absolute sitter. And thankfully, they miss it. And the whistle goes and we lose 1-0. We were so by far the better team. It's so frustrating. It really is so frustrating to play the better football. To have some really good chances and come away from the game with a 1-0 loss. It really is bloody frustrating. And yet again... They're tabloids. I can't stand the bloody tabloids. They're having another dig at Carroll, you know, hoping to break his duck. You know, the lad is trying. He's really trying hard. You know, I can't condemn him. You know, he's putting extra shifts in, in training. And he's really making an effort. You know, unlike Carlton Cole, who's just, you know, I say that's a little bit unfair, to be honest. You know, Carlton Cole is doing the same. He's just struggling at the moment. Hopefully one of them will find their form. And hopefully we will uh, pick up some much-needed points. I'm really disappointed about that game, I've got to say. I'm really bloody disappointed. You, you know, losing that game on top of everything going on in the press about Joey O'Brien, it's just uh, the stress is mounting up. We're at a clinical point of the season, and um, it's just really frustrating. Really frustrating. As you can see, I'm going to make some changes to the lads. A few of the lads, their form is not really good. The energy levels are down. And uh, they need to have a, you know, a few players need to have a rest. So I'm going to have to really rotate quite well, and uh, hope that we can uh, get through this bad patch. Bit of a barren spell, you know. We had a decent win against QPR. Fantastic own goal by Terrell. I, I watched it on match of the day again, and that did make me chuckle. Fantastic own goal. I'm not sure he, he'd agree, but you know, that's the way. Uh, that's the way the cookie crumbles. And now we have a huge match against Tottenham. If you remember the last time we played Tottenham, we were 2-0 we were down early doors, and we came back with a dramatic, dramatic 2-2 draw. Hopefully it won't be like that this time. Hopefully we'll have a, an easier game and, uh, and pick up the three points without too much concern. As you can see, they've got a few injury worries. You know, when you don't see Bale on the team, or Vertonghen, you know, you, you're thinking to yourself, do you know what, Gallas at the back, he's slow. Ooh, Gab's in and around him all day long. You're thinking, that's going to be a real positive move for us at least you know something's going our way for once hopefully we'll be able to capitalize on it hopefully we'll be able to take it to them and uh, hopefully we will bring home the three points so as you can see it's, it's a home game the crowd is absolutely bubbling and I can't wait to give Tottenham a game I really can't wait so I hope you enjoyed that guys and I'll catch you in episode number 18